All right, here we go. It is time for worship and wellness, friends. The best way to start your day. Stay happy and healthy till day's end. It's called the refreshing way. Start your day the refreshing way. There's quiz time with questions and testimonies. Always a time for prayer. It's your worship and wellness broadcast. Start your day in your day. do love that song. I had to get permission to use that. Um, that's what they use on his morning broadcast. That's where again with us is Dr. Shellam Flemons. We're so excited that he is going to, he's being with us today to, to tell us how to cleanse our way to cure. Many times we think that it's the end of the world with some of the diagnoses that we are given when we go to the doctor. And we think that we have to take that medicine and we're not real tickled about that, but he is here to tell us the refreshing way that where we can cleanse ourselves to cure. So without further ado, uh, Dr. Flemings, I want to give you as much time as possible. We're so glad you all have joined us tonight and we're going to pass it over to Dr. Flemings. Doctor. Thank you, Sister Carrie. God bless you all. So happy to be with you and um, we're just excited. Um, at this present time, I haven't gotten any notifications, so we might not have to just stop right at um, the top of the hour. So um, until I get more notification on that, um, we may be able to be on a little longer. We're talking about cleansing your way to cure, and I'll be um, sharing. I think I might need some permission to share. It says you cannot share screen while other participant is sharing. So um, Sis, I might need you to make some adjustment there. Let me know when I can okay, share. Done. Sorry about that. No problem. No problem at all. All righty. Praise God. So cleanse your way to cure. That is what we'll be talking about today. And, you know, as Sister um, was talking, you know, we think sometimes there's no hope. And I'm here to tell you that there is hope. As a matter of fact, there's a verse in the Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. It says, there is hope to all the living for a living dog is better than a dead lion. So from that, we get the famous phrase, where there is life, there is hope. But God loves to be glorified. He's glorified when the simple things confound the wise. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26, you can read all the way through verse 29. And so let's have a word of prayer as we begin. Father, as we open the Bible and science in this presentation, we're going to see the miraculous and amazing health plan that you ordain for your people. I pray that you would be with us, inspire someone, uh, give someone hope, um, change discouragement into encouragement, change fear into hope, change depression into excitement. In Jesus' name, amen. God has a health plan. It's called the GLAD diet or the GLAD. This is God's life activating diet. And man has a health plan that includes SAD, the standard American diet. We're going to show that as we cleanse toxins out of our body, we're on our way to cure. This is review for some, maybe others haven't seen it, but God, who is the great manufacturer of the human body, this is what he said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, 
and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree to you it shall be for meat the original diet had no pigs no possums no cows no deer no chicken no fish the original diet was plant based the world would possibly call this a vegan diet but the vegan montage or the vegan concept has so many different nuances to it that we don't use that. Like a vegan might not wear a leather belt um, or wear leather shoes. We don't see any problem with that in biblical wellness. Even um, the prophet John the Baptist wore a leather girdle. So um, about his loins, the Bible says. So um, not that we believe in, you know, some of these things you see on TV or whatever, these skin type full leather outfits. That's not um, something we, we feel led to do. But nonetheless, um, we are not vegan. Also, vegans don't eat honey, I understand. The Bible says, eat thou honey because it is good in Proverbs 24. After Adam and Eve sinned, God added something to what they would partake of. It was medicinal herbs. That was uh, Genesis 3.18. It says, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So you have fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. And then after sin, God added medicinal herbs. Friends, if we can get back to this with more fruits and vegetables uh, uh, comprising the majority of our diet, then adding nuts and seeds. Um, we would add legumes in there if you want, you know, as, as part of that package. Um, the bottom line is um, this is the original diet and it contains all the nutrition that you need. And it, 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 it would heal the body, keep our blood alkaline. And it is the only four food groups not linked to any major disease. If you ask for an A disease, somebody might say, holler out Alzheimer's. There is no study that links asparagus to Alzheimer's. Give me a B disease, bronchitis. There is no studies linking broccoli to bronchitis. Give me a C disease, that's cancer. There is no disease, I'm sorry, there's no studies linking cauliflower to cancer. Or we could even say COVID for the C. That's a, a hot topic for the day. The D, dan, dan, uh, um, diabetes, there's no disease linking dandelion leaves to diabetes. But as soon as you cross over into uh, pork, beef, chicken, fish, um, milk, eggs, cheese, there's all kinds of studies, piles and piles of studies linking those foods to heart attack, strokes, cancers, autoimmune diseases, bronchitis, just overall inflammation. And that is not the kind of insides that you want insides full of inflammation, especially during COVID-19. If you keep your immune system healthy, my friends, um, COVID-19 would be like a common cold that just passed by because our immune systems are so weak that that is why people are dying of COVID. This is the first 10 generations of um, mankind. And by the way, I believe that it's appropriate to establish that this is a health series. So this is a foundational, very foundational message for you. Adam lived 930 years, Seth, 912, Enos, 905, Canaan, 910, Mahalalil, 895, Jared, 962, Enoch was translated, Methuselah, 969, Lamech, 777, and Noah, 950. The average lifespan was 912. This is all found in Genesis 5, and you have to go to Genesis 9 to find out about Noah. All of this is in the Bible. Friends, they were eating primarily a plant-based diet, and look how long they lived. Mankind started eating meat at the flood. Now, some of you may know it, some of you don't, but a lot of people I have found by asking biblical trivia questions, they believe that the animals went into the ark two by two. That's not what the Bible says. It says, of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean two by two, the male and his female. So there was 14 cows, well, 14 bovine, we would say, because a cow is a female uh, uh, bovine. So uh, 14 bovine, 14 deer, 14 sheep, 14 goats, 14 buffalo, one male, one female, pair in pairs. 
but only two pigs, two possums, two lizards, and two llamas. My friend, God never intended for us to eat unclean animals. That's like pork, for example. And the Bible tells us in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14 that a fish that is uh, uh, an animal of the sea would have to have fins, fins, and scales in order to be clean. So lobsters don't meet the standard. Shrimp does not meet the standard. Catfish do not meet the standard, so on and so forth. Therefore, um, these animals were put on the earth and in the sea to clean up. They are the garbage disposal system. And so their flesh contains a lot of the toxins that are um, in, in, in spilled upon the ground and in the sea. We don't need to be eating them. I have found that not many people teach this principle. And I believe the reason is because a lot of people teach that what Moses was given uh, as it relates to dietary restrictions, um, that law was done away with at the cross, which that is not technically correct. The Bible says what was done away with at the cross were the shadowy things that pointed forward to Jesus. There's nothing shadowy about keeping you alive by not eating pork. Um, but nonetheless, this was thousands of years before Moses was thought of. And so the bottom line is that if we follow this, there will be a lot more people alive because there will be a lot less pork. Okay, so they went onto the ark and most people don't know that they were actually in there for five months. That is a long time, that's a long fast. So God allowed them to bring in those clean animals so that afterwards they can give Thanksgiving sacrifices and they would also have food to eat while they were planting and harvesting. But you know how it is when they got a taste of their McDonald's of the day or their, uh, uh, um, I don't know what, in Gulfport, what are the popular you know, things, uh, re restaurants, Burger King, I'm sure you have Burger King down there. But the bottom line is when they tasted that, they didn't want to give it up. So although they eventually planted and harvested, they started eating meat on a regular basis. Therefore, Shem, Noah's son, only lived 600 years. Our facts had his son only lived 438. Selah only lived 433. Eber only lived 464. Peleg, 239. Sarah, 230. Mahor, 148. Terah, 205. And Abraham, Father Abraham, 175. All of this is in Genesis 11. You have to go to Genesis 25, I believe, to get the years of Noah's life. I'm sorry, of Abraham's life. The lifespan dropped from 912 down to 317. And the only change was that they started eating the flesh of dead animals. I like this slide here. Some of you who have lived a little longer than me, particularly lived in the country, you would recognize that what's on the screen is an outhouse. And we like to let you know that there was a fly that once lived in the outhouse. And you need to understand that the frog came along and he ate the fly that once lived in the outhouse. And then the snake ate the frog that ate the fly that lived in the outhouse. And then the pig came along and he ate the snake, which ate the frog, which ate the fly, which lived in the outhouse. So God didn't want us to eat the pig, which eats the snake, which eats the frog, which eats the fly that lives in the outhouse. Because when you do, you are eating what is left in the outhouse. My friends, God is so smart. And he's so smart that even the Bible defines health. You won't define health from a medical school textbook not and, and, and get it right. You have to go to the Bible to get it right. And this is what you won't learn in medical school. Jesus defined health this way. He said, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So Jesus was already introducing wholeness. The world calls it holistic medicine. God says you're made whole. And then he asked another man, wilt thou be made whole in John 6, 5? You have Matthew 9, 12 and John 6, 5. So Jesus understood and he taught that wholeness is physical, mental, and spiritual healing. You can read about that in Deuteronomy 6, 5. This is biblical wellness. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That's your mental. With all thy soul, that's your spiritual. And with all thy might, that's your physical. So when we are striving for prevention or cure, we must address the body mentally, physically, and spiritually. A lot of people don't have it right up in their minds 
And so they're quick to give up when they try a natural remedy and it doesn't work. Oh, I better go to get my, my drug because the natural remedy didn't work. We have no, uh, uh, we've lost our um, uh, stick to uh, our perseverance, you see, because our minds aren't right. We just wanna do the convenient. So if you have a mindset that uh, I want instant coffee, instant tea, I want everything instantly, you have the wrong mindset and you will not get well. It takes some work, my friend, to be healthy. You have to make changes in your lifestyle and your diet and, your, and, and develop a plan of exercise and, 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 and all of these things. It's a mind thing. And yet what, it, what stimulates that mind is my connection with Christ as I understand that my body isn't even mine. The body is God's temple. And once we understand the spiritual, we begin to realize I can, with his help, do all things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I believe that's Philippians 4, 13. So mental, spiritual, physical. The Bible teaches something about disease now. We learned that health is wholeness. That means it's body, mind, and soul. We have to um, not just look at the body. We've got to look at the mind and the soul. Now, one thing I will say before we get into disease, when you look at the body, you look at the whole body. We don't look at the symptom of a disease. When you look at a symptom, you can say, what drug can I take to reverse this symptom? But we don't ask, what is that drug that alleviates that symptom doing to the rest of my body? So you can take a drug for your hypertension that might hurt your liver. You might take a drug for your liver that might raise your blood pressure. You see, so then you have to take a blood pressure drug, but that causes diabetes. Or then you have to take diabetes medication. Well, then that causes autoimmune disease. So then you've got to take prednisone, okay? So that'll cause uh, depression. So then you got to take an antidepressant. And that's how people are treated today. The Bible said there's a better way and it lets us know that every disease has a cause. How do we find that out? The Bible says it this way, the curse Cause less shall not come. Something bad happens, there is a cause. Proverbs 26, verse two. So what do we do? So I feel bad, there's a cause, what do I do? The Bible tells us the cause which I knew not, I search out. We should search for the cause. I don't feel well, my lungs hurt. So do I just go to the medicine cabinet? No, what have I been drinking? What have I been eating? Have I been uh, getting any exercise? Um, what, what have I been eating too much sugar? The cause which I knew not, I search out. That's what the Bible says we should do. You see, friends, as it relates to disease and health, there is a, oh, there is a cause to affect relationship. When we're obedient, we have health. When we're disobedient, we have disease. Deuteronomy 5.33 says, you shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live and that it may be well with you and that ye may prolong your days. How many of you wanna live long? In the land which ye shall possess. So obedience leads to longer life. From Ministry of Healing, page 234, we read this. Disease never comes without a cause. The way is prepared and disease invited by disregard of the laws of health. So let me illustrate that. By the way that we eat, by what we ate for breakfast, we got on the phone and we called diabetes. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Uh, yes, may I speak to diabetes? This is diabetes. Diabetes, I have a wonderful place for you to stay. You can stay as long as you like. I mean, I've laid it out for you. You will have an in-suite. Uh, uh, king size bed, just come right in me and you can stay here forever. <laughs> really? Yeah, diabetes, just, you don't, don't have to pay anything. You just, no pay, just stay, okay? We do the same thing with cancer, arthritis, all these diseases. By our lifestyle, we're inviting them to come in. It goes on to say, many suffer in consequence of the transgression of their parents. While they are not responsible for what their parents have done, it is nevertheless their duty to ascertain what are and what are not violations of the laws of health. 
They should avoid the wrong habits of their parents and by correct living, place themselves in better conditions. That's Ministry of Healing, page 234. And so we also have from that same wonderful book, page 127 says, disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. So disease is an effort to get rid of toxins. So let me explain it like this. We don't even use alarm clocks these days. We use our phone. So I have a broadcast at six o'clock every morning. That's actually five o'clock in the morning, your time. Now, just to stimulate your interest, uh, there are several people that do get up at five and join us. You can just be listening on the phone and join us on the worship and wellness broadcast. But I can tell you, I get up before they do because I have to get some things prepared. It doesn't always feel good when my alarm goes off at four o'clock central time um, and I have to get up. Now I could take a hammer and slam my phone and the alarm will go off, okay? But my phone is keeping me from being late for the broadcast. So disease is like an alarm clock. It's ringing to say, wait a minute, you're dying before your time. And it gives you an opportunity to wake up and do something about it. That's the beauty of it, friends. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. Now, I love this particular slide. And usually when I come to people's churches, I ask for uh, a little child to come up. Sometimes they're three and four, five, five years old, usually with their parent or their big brother or sister. And I ask the little child, you know, I have a cold and one of the symptoms of the cold is coughing. I just want to know, I'm asking a three-year-old, can I cough on you? And they say, no, no. And they run behind mommy and try to hide behind her skirt. And then I say, okay, 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 no problem. I'm not going to cough on you. And I say, ah, 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 can I sneeze on you? I chew. And they run, no, 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 you can't sneeze on me. And I just say, okay, 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 I won't sneeze on you. And I'll ask that three or four year old, I'll say, listen, I am just so hot. I'm just sweaty. Can I just wipe my sweat all on you? And they don't let me wipe their sweat on them. A three or four year old understands that coughing is toxic, has some toxins in it. Sneezing eliminates toxins. A fever, you eliminate toxins, eliminating toxins. These are all efforts of nature to get rid of the common cold. You cough out the poisons, you sneeze out the poisons, you sweat out the poisons. The problem with us is we take a drug to stop the cough, which is toxic. We take an antihistamine to stop the sneezing, which is toxic. We take a Tylenol or something else to stop the fever, which is toxic. So what I'm saying is there's nothing wrong with taking something natural to alleviate the symptoms, but you are still flushing the body of toxins when you do that with natural remedies. But with drugs, you're adding more toxins to an already toxic body. And so you'll never ever get cured this way. Drugs do not cure disease. And that's what we're learning on the next slide. Ministry of Healing, page 126 says, people need to be taught that drugs do not cure disease. It is true that they sometimes afford present relief and the patient appears to recover as a result of their use. This is because nature has sufficient vital force to expel the poison, that's the drug, and to correct the condition that caused the disease. Our bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God is saying that sometimes the body is able to get rid of the toxin in the drug and still make you better. Health is recovered in spite of the drug, but in most cases, the drug only changes the form and location of the disease. May I remind you that a vaccine is a drug, but in most cases, the drug only changes the form and location of the disease. And look at what it says. Often the effect of the poison seems to be overcome for a time, but the results remain in the system and work great harm at some later period. Friends, I am here to tell you 
that there, the, the vaccine that's being pushed on people, if it was so safe, why won't the FDA just approve it? Why? It's not enough time. And so my friends, we don't know what this drug actually does. We don't know what the final outcome, the five-year outcome, the 10-year outcome of this particular drug. I try not to be on a platform where I denounce the vaccine, but I am on a platform where I promote God's health plan. But if we would keep our immune systems healthy, even the television will tell you that the majority of people who die are people who have pre-existing conditions. Let's get rid of those. You don't have to have hypertension. You don't have to be overweight. You don't have to have diabetes type two now, if you make lifestyle changes, friends. This is in most cases. So notice that it changes the form. So what does this mean? So let's just say if I have a cold and I treat that cold with a drug, that cold can turn into respiratory diseases of other types. It can stay in the location and change form. It can be a sinus headache, asthma, bronchitis, so on and so forth. So what does it mean it can change location? Well, if it can't come out the front door and you cough it out, you take a drug, it can come out the back door. That means that you might have diarrhea, okay? The drug can change the location. If it changes the location, you probably would never dream that your digestive problems are the result of drugs you took for your respiratory problems. You would never dream that your aching bones five years later might be due to the pain medication you took for a headache five years before. This is what God is telling us. There are two primary principles that we like to follow and they both can be remembered, remembered by the life of the flesh. The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. So you've got to have good, healthy blood. The blood needs a lot of oxygen and nutrients and waste elimination and all those wonderful things. Lots of things that come from a healthy lifestyle. The Bible says a sound heart, a strong heart is the life of the flesh. So good blood and its proper circulation is the life of our flesh. The life of the body is healthy blood and good circulation. So we need to get down to the nitty gritty. The Bible says in Luke 16, 10, he that is faithful in that which is least will be faithful also in much. So what does the single cell in your body actually need? Well, guess what? The first need is oxygen. Without it, it will die in seconds. The next need is water. Without water, a cell can die in minutes. The third is nutrition. Without nutrition, a cell can die in days. The next is waste elimination. Without it, the cell will die in weeks. And without a defense system, i.e. your immune system, the cell will always die prematurely. Five needs of every cell. You can't get these needs unless you're following God's health plan. And here's the health plan, friends. Think of refreshing. Isn't that a nice word? Refreshing. The R in refreshing, rely on God. The E, eat healthy. The F, fresh air. The second R, rest. The second E, exercise, the S, self-control, that's temperance, the H, H2O, drink water, the I, in the sun, the N, never give up, and the G, give to others. Friends, you can overcome disease the refreshing way. So for Ministry of Healing 127, we have four steps to recovery. In case of sickness, number one, the cause should be ascertained. Find out what causes the disease, the disease. Number two, unhealthful conditions should be changed. The circumstances around you, the air you're breathing and so on and so forth. Change that. Then it says, wrong habits corrected. That's the repeated actions that we do. Those actions that do not produce health should be corrected. Then nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. So you ascertain the cause, you change unhealthful conditions, you correct bad habits, and then you assist the body in the effort it's making to expel impurities. That's why we cleanse our way to cure. We've got to assist nature. There's a lot of people that 
don't, they, they like to teach health, but they don't believe in fasting. They like to teach health, but they don't want to think about helping the colon out, flushing the liver out, flushing the kidneys out. All of these are important. I'm not saying it always has to be like an enema, for example, but I'm just saying we do need to flush out toxins. So we recommend juice fasting. The picture that you have here are just several um, samples or examples of masticating juicers. The one on the top left is the one we use. Uh, it's the most expensive of the group. It is the Green uh, Star Elite. Um, it's around $550, but it's a really good juicer. And we use that one in our retreat. The one to the right is called the Slow Start. It comes from the same company. It's about roughly half the price, two to $300 range. It goes slower, it does the job. With that, in that same category is the bottom left, that's the Omega. These are just samples. There are more juicers out there, but it's about the same price range as the Slow Start. And now there's a lot of entry level uh, masticating juicers now. That small one, I think is the Joku, but they have different ones that are out there. I have not used the entry level ones, the smaller ones, but those are in the $100 range. So I'm pretty sure they're pretty slow, but they do the job, it appears. Here are some principles of juicing. You want to use organic whenever possible so you can avoid toxic chemicals in the food. Drink no less if you're on a juice fast than 48 ounces, that's three pints a day. You can drink up to three quarts, which is 96. So people with certain conditions like cancer, we would have them drinking three quarts. You can drink equal glasses spread throughout the day. Now, what we do in our wellness retreat is we give them a quart in the morning, a quart around noon, and a quart in the you know, mid to late afternoon. We don't expect them to guzzle it down, but they could let it spread over a couple hour period. And, and that's how we do it. So we're not just chasing somebody every you know, hour. Hey, here's your juice, here's your juice. But you do want to spread it out. You don't want to drink it all at one time. It's important that we have a slightly alkaline pH. A pH of 7.5 is awesome. Sometimes when we have cancer deaths, we jump, we bump it up to like 8.5 for a short period of time and then let it go back down to 7.5. Disease can't thrive in an, in an alkaline environment. And so with seven being pure neutral, which is what the pH of distilled water, you want to bump it up with more fruits and vegetables so that you can have the right alkalinity to get rid of the acids in the system. Here's some benefits of juicing. You'll get more vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals than you could eat in the same amount of food that you could juice. In other words, that, 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 that head of broccoli, or that, that bunch of kale, that'll make up some juice, but you couldn't eat all that broccoli or eat all that kale, but you're getting the nutrients from it. Help, helps keep your blood alkaline and it stimulates detoxification. Here are some conditions improved by juicing. And this is just a short list. Hypertension, diabetes, cancer, autoimmune disease, which is a plethora of diseases, arthritis, male and female problems, such as enlarged prostate, or for the female, fibroid tumors, endometriosis, PCOS, those kinds of things. So we'll have now seven channels of elimination. We should make sure our colons are clean. We should make sure we're not overburdening our liver with too much fat and protein from animals and too much white sugar from pro and processed foods. We should drink plenty of water so that our kidneys are flushed out. We should get exercise so that we have uh, our perspiration can take toxins out of the skin. We should deep breathe and get out outside and exercise to get our lungs to release toxins. And then as we keep circulation going properly, the blood and the lymph, which are tissue fluids, actually are able to take their toxins to places where they can be eliminated. That is our presentation at this time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing and I believe we can open it up for any questions, comments. I'll let my dear sister moderate for us. Awesome, awesome. Yes, I didn't know if we would have enough time for questions uh, at the end. So this is perfect. 
Um, I have some help here. Do you know if there's been any uh, questions that popped up so far on Facebook? All right. So if you have any questions right now, um, any questions based on what was just presented, or if you have any questions about a disease process that you would like to know about, or someone that you would like to ask for, that maybe someone that's in your care, um, now is the time. So please just drop your comments or questions in the, the comments below, and we will, uh, we will address them. Also, feel free, if you think of something later on, to go ahead and drop your comment there. And, uh oh, I'm sorry, hold on, thank you. Um, you can drop your comment there and um, we will address it the next live stream, if, if, which is next Wednesday at six o'clock. We'll be doing this for four weeks straight. So I'm excited, this is week one. So if you have any questions, I'm checking, we're checking to see if there's any questions placed. We'll be doing this for four weeks. Sorry for the echo. Okay. All right, I see some comments, but no questions yet. Um, we'll give them a little bit of time to, um, to hold on, I did have an inbox. Let me see if this is, okay, no. All right. Well, Dr. Flemings, thank you again for joining us this week. Um, and for consenting to do this for us. Our pastor is on a much needed vacation and uh, Dr. Flemings is always uh, willing to, to come and, and help us and educate us and I'm always excited. Okay, so we have, we do have a question. I'm always excited to, to be here with you. My okay. pleasure. It hasn't, hasn't popped up on mine yet, what is it? Okay, they wanted you to review what could you go over the refreshing items again, what um, for the refreshing way. Sure. So actually, I'll, um, I will go ahead and uh, reshare that screen. And uh, so they can see it. So yes. I don't know if they want to take a screenshot of that, but the R rely on God The E eat healthy. The F, fresh air. The R is rest. The E, second E, second R, second E. The E is exercise. The S, self-control, that's temperance. Uh, the H, H2O, drinking water. The I, in the sun. The N, never give up and give to others. So if you're familiar with what is often termed the eight laws of health, the first eight of the 10 um, from rely on God to in the sun are the eight laws. And then we add a perseverance principle, never give up. And then a selflessness principle, give to others. Amen. Thank you. And uh, we do have another um, uh, sister, Deidre, if that did not answer your question or if you uh, needed more information, please let us know. Uh, we have a question from Merlene Elliott. Uh, she said, what is the best way to eliminate or help someone who suffers from constipation? Okay. Um, what I'm doing is um, I've just decided to see if I can't put that um, refreshing way in the chat. I don't know how it's going to work, but we'll, we'll see if it'll work. Okay. Hey, it does. All right, good. All right. Okay, so we need to make sure that they're drinking plenty of water. Um, it takes fat, fiber, water to make the right stool, of course, with other waste matter. So make sure a person's not dehydrated. You, your colon is suspended by ligaments. I wish I had a little pillow, but I'm just going to grab my phone for lack of a better. It's suspended by ligaments. And so when you're walking and exercising, the colon is being massaged by the insides of the body by exercise. So you need to make sure that exercise is taking place. You may need to make sure you're eating fibrous food. Like I do on occasion, if I have to go out, probably the safest place to eat out is Chipotle because they have brown rice. Yes, you can get a Whopper, impossible Whopper at Burger King, but you got all that white bread. So again, I'm not judging anybody or anything like that. And I have had an impossible Whopper, but I would prefer to get that um, fiber 
from the from the brown rice at Chipotle. So if I'm eating out, just to use it as an example. Now you can use a little flaxseed with your meal, um, flaxseed meal. You can have it ground up ahead of time and kept in the refrigerator and sprinkle a teaspoon over your food. It gives it a little nutty flavor. Um, that's good. But again, let's make sure we're not eating white rice, white flour, white pasta, and that type of thing. So you add fiber, get your water, and then um, make sure you're getting your exercise. That being said, we do have herbs, like we have a colon cleanse, um, and that helps to you know, sweep and, and, and stimulate the peristaltic waves to have an elimination. Another thing that you might have in your home um, that, that actually helps to kill parasites is diatomaceous earth. And to a lot of people, it acts as a mild laxative. So that's all some people need is a little diatomaceous earth, a teaspoon twice a day. Um, and, and that help, does help. So those are some areas um, that I think we can start with, some suggestions I should say we can start with. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Very good questions. Uh, checking to see if we have any more. Um, if we do not, wanted to uh, again reiterate that uh, Dr. Flemings has a live broadcast that happens on the radio and on Facebook. Um, it's, it's on the radio as what well, right originally. It, it, right? It, they call it internet radio, actually. Um, okay. But, you know, so people can go to a particular website and listen to it. Um, I'll go ahead in the chat and type in, it's 720, 820, 14, 29. That's at, uh, you all are on central time, so I'll say 5 a.m. central. It's actually 6 a.m. eastern time. That's right. the main. And also, if people would like to contact me and get on my WhatsApp list, we send out a private message to everybody with the contents of that broadcast. So they have links where they can listen. And there's also a playback number. It uses free conference call. It's a playback number. I can give you that too as well. That's going to be 712-770-4019. And then the access code is 635270. Of course, We'd love to have you come to our flagship website, which is torso.org. I'll put that there, T-O-R-S-O-E.org. And our worship and wellness broadcast website is T-O-R-W-M.org. So that gives you some information and you all can reach out to us if we can help. Yes, I'm sh actually sharing your website now. I don't, uh, while we're waiting on other questions, um, just if you, can you walk us through a quick navigation of uh, where to find everything? Um, yes. Um, are you, you saying you're at, you're on the website? I'm not seeing anything. Not so, uh oh, it says my screen sharing is paused. Hold on. Let me see. All right. Now, if you need to do it, I can share it. Okay, there you go. All right. All right. So you're on the website. Um, we have basically seven areas uh, of, of, you might call it ministry. So the escape area is just all about our ministry. So if you click on that, it's going to be the about page and, you know, those types of things. The disclaimer, there you go. When you go to restore to the right, um, you'll see that it, it talks about our wellness retreats. We have monthly wellness retreats for 12 days. Um, and um, those, those wellness retreats, Hold on, I'm going to just tell this person I will call them back, call you back on broadcast. Okay. Um, so the wellness retreat is a, we have a facility here. You can kind of see this is our living room area and kitchen and everything. And um, outside is our deck and there's some deck furniture. It's a rainy day. So, you know, it's not, if you come in the summer months, um, we do have a pool. We use that for exercise. Uh, we have two rooms for guests. It's not a large facility, but we actually treat the sick every month, most months of the year. And we have guests that come in. We also do wellness coaching. Um, so if you go back to that website under restore, you'll see wellness coaching. And that is where we actually write a program for you to follow 
And she's actually showing you that you would start by clicking that coaching application. Um, and then we do some counseling, you know, pastoral counseling as well. Um, so you can reach out to us. Um, that's myself, my wife um, in that picture there. And so basically that's an area of ministry. We have the wellness, I'm sorry, you know, the um, restore aspect of the ministry. Now under learn, um, you'll see if you go to the right, um, we do have a blog and we haven't put a lot of content, but we are about to put more content. We are also striving to very soon launch an online training school. You could take a class on breast cancer. You could take a class on how to cure colon cancer, a class on how to deal with these diseases. This is also where you would learn about our speaking engagements. And um, we haven't done it in a while, but we um, do offer field schools. Um, not sure how long we'll be able to do that because we are honoring our father and our mother that our days may be long upon the land. My mother, who is 91, is about to come live with us. So that will limit us from extensive travel, um, like where we're, where we're gone for days and days and days. But we just, until the Lord shows us, we're going to leave it up there and see how the Lord leads. So the student internship is, that's a case-by-case -case basis. If a person um, maybe had, a way, we had some housing available and a person wanted to come and volunteer and learn during one of our wellness retreats, that's what that's all about. So um, you go to the next one, uh, conserve, we promote organic gardening, and, you know, those types of things. And then um, shop is where you have our herbs. And maybe you can click on the herbs and supplements, sis, uh, right below there, and herbal extracts. We have different types of herbs, but the herbal extracts, um, you will actually see, um, we have generally an extract for just about anything. Um, just a second here. No problem. Um, yeah, so it starts with addictions, that's A, and it's just alphabetical. It goes all the way on the W's is weight loss. So, um, you know, it'll show so many on each page and you can go to the next page and so on and so forth. Um, we have some interesting titles. Don't think that we don't know how to spell. Um, we usually <laughs> do not um, name a disease the name. We don't name an extract the name of the disease because the disease names are patented by the government. So they can stop you from calling it a cancer formula or a diabetes formula or whatever. So if it's nutrition that may help, it will be purposely misspelled so that people know what it can do. They can do their own research, but we can't use that patented name. So we have a lot of products and we ship out generally Monday, at least Monday through Thursday, sometimes on Friday as well. Um, and um, you can order from us. And the herbal extracts are all $25 and the shipping is free. And so look and see what we have. And you can always call. Um, sis, you can um, give them my, my phone number and it's a okay. cell number. And, um, and that cell number, 706-897-8537. Uh, you can call or text. If I can't get it, I'll call you back or text you back. And... Uh, you Can know, you repeat you that one more time for? for sure. 706-897-8537. I'll do it one more time. 706-897-8537. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for navigating through. So on yeah. this, this is... Um, talking about the, the worship is, you know, our, just the principles of biblical wellness and some healing uh, promises. But um, also probably it's under learn where you can um, uh, hear about our, I, I believe, our, no, it's not. I, I was thinking the daily broadcast was advertised there. So it's not actually uh, advertised, but the bottom line is we have a totally separate broadcast that lists our worship and wellness uh, items. And that's T-O-R-W-M dot org. Um, and so if you want to go there, you can, it's up to you. But it's T-O-R-W-M dot org. And that's where our worship and wellness uh, messages are posted. And people can go there and listen to the broadcast. Yeah. All right.
I don't think we have any other questions. So again, if you think of any questions that you may want to ask, uh, feel free to do so uh, in the comment section or you can inbox us and we will be sure to uh, address that in our next broadcast again, which is next Wednesday at six o'clock. We hope that you will be returning and bringing guests with you. Anyone that's in need of wholeness um, and, and being whole and healthy and needy, in need of healing, please, please share this information with them. I promise it's life-changing. So um, I think, I know that you have um, immediately following this, you have another um, engagement. So I want to be mindful of the time. So if there's not any other questions, we can go ahead and close out at this time. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. So we uh, will close out with a divine, uh closing us out with a prayer. Uh, sure. Absolutely. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to the Maranatha uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church and all those they reach out to in Gulfport, Mississippi. We ask that you would bless as we strive to um, allow you to use us to be an instrument of blessing so that people can be well and that people can experience the true health of the Bible. We thank you for all you've done for us. We ask that your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for the privilege. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to next week and we'll be going out with some music from brother, our acapellian, uh, brother Namdi Bryant. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. If you're happy and you know it, yeah. say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Oh, amen. yeah. If you're happy, and you know where, and you know where, so where.
Show Band. If you're happy and you know it, say amen.